This video will discuss the operation of a time and instantaneous overcurrent protective relay, in this case a General Electric model 121AC53B. As discussed previously, the purpose of a protective relay is to tell a circuit breaker in an electric power system to trip if a dangerous condition is detected. In this case, the dangerous condition is overcurrent. We're sensing uh, the amount of current going through the power lines using a current transformer that's stepping down what could be a potentially dangerous amount of current down to a safer value, usually uh, uh, in the range of 0 to 5 amps or the full range of the, the transformer. That lower current comes into the relay. If the current is deemed to be excessive, the relay closes the contact, sending 125 volt DC power to the trip coil on the breaker, commanding the circuit breaker to trip and interrupting power to the load. So we have looked at a time overcurrent relay in a previous video, and that's where we use the induction disk principle to tell this relay to, uh, to, the relay to tell the circuit breaker to trip if the current has been there long enough to cause the wheel to torque over and to overcome the drag of the magnet and to touch the contact, a little peg, and to turn the light on. That's a time overcurrent function. It's not a hard set threshold. It's a pickup value that must be exceeded, and when exceeded, the degree of excess determines how long it takes for the wheel to move around. So that's the time overcurrent function. We're now going to look at the instantaneous overcurrent function, which is a single point threshold trip. That is set much higher than the pickup value of the time overcurrent relay. So the idea of an instantaneous overcurrent is if it senses uh, a current condition that exceeds the instantaneous value, it will immediately close a contact to trip the circuit breaker. There's no time delay, there's no waiting for a disc to rotate, it is right away, right immediate. So we're going to demonstrate that using the same test setup we had before. Like I said, this relay is a combination time overcurrent and instantaneous. So for this test, we're going to ignore the motion of this disk. It's going to be rotating quite fast when we dial up the current to a value sufficient to trip that instantaneous relay. So let's ignore the rotation of that disk and only pay attention to the instantaneous. So I'm going to dial the current up. Right now, this is measuring millivolts, which is proportional to direct amps in my shunt resistor. So right now, we're measuring half an amp. I'll turn this up. There's two and a half amps, 3.1 amps, four amps. You can start to hear a buzz, and that buzz is the result of the magnetic attraction in the instantaneous relay assembly. It's nothing more than an electric coil that carries that full current coming from our current transformer, or in this case, from our test jig. And so as I turn the current up, the 60 cycle AC is going to cause a buzzing sensation in that uh, solenoid, in the armature of that solenoid. I'll turn the current up a little bit higher. You can hear the buzzing. You can see the wheel rotating, but we're going to ignore that for now. This is over the pickup value of the uh, time over current, but has not yet exceeded the value of the instantaneous trip, the pickup for that unit. So I'm going to continue to increase current. At some point, it goes click and we have the orange flags telling us that an instantaneous trip has occurred. And that happens somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 amps. So I'm gonna turn that down. Now my current's down to the original half an amp value. And we notice that the orange flags are holding position and they will continue to do so until I push the reset right there and they drop by gravity. So once again, I'm going to increase the current in my test. I'm gonna see when that instantaneous unit picks up. Let's watch it again. Right there, about 10.2 amps. When I do this test, I don't want to maintain the current at that high value. Uh, this does tend to warm up if you do that. That's not good for the relay, and it can influence its calibration. So I do this again, see if I get a repeatable result. Last time it was about 10.2 amps, or 10.2 millivolts on the voltmeter. Here we go. go about 10.1, 10.3. This setup I'm using right now is very crude. I would not actually want to calibrate a real protective relay with this jig that I've made, with this uh, benchtop meter and my adjustment here. It's very, very crude. There are companies that actually do make calibration equipment for protective relays. And when you're doing a real protective relay calibration, you want to use the right gear. 
This is simply a demonstration. I wanted to leave that disclaimer out right now. Just a demonstration to show you what the relay is supposed to do. So demonstrating instantaneous trip, in this case at a value of about 10 amps. So if we had a CT ratio of 600 to 5, 600 amps here, sending out 5 amps to our relay. A value of 10 amps here would represent 1,200 amps of current in the power line. So demonstration of instantaneous trip and time uh, overcurrent trip for an overcurrent relay. For the time overcurrent function, that's uh, number 51 according to the ANSI IEEE standard. The instantaneous overcurrent is a number 50. So this type of relay is often referred to as a 50-51 relay. 50 being the instantaneous overcurrent and 51 being the time overcurrent. And that's the operation of a uh, sort of old legacy style overcurrent protective relay.